welcome to the Thursday edition of DC Today. My last day recording the DC Today from Grand Rapids, Michigan. We'll be on the plane back to New York City tomorrow, Friday. And uh, again, kind of a boring day in markets. Um, there was a bit of up and down movement along the way, but when all was said and done, the Dow closed down four points, uh, not even you know one basis point. So flat day on the Dow. The S&P was up uh, a tad, I think uh, 30 basis points or so in the NASDAQ up more as tech caught a little bid and consumer discretionary has uh, continued to do well. So you've definitely had a, a nice little junk rally in this period. The 10 year yield was up seven basis points. Most of the shorter end of the curve was up around the same. So the curve itself has only inverted further um, or stayed around the same level. It is not tightened and that that inversion you're talking about it being basically back to 1%. What I mean by that is that a two-year is paying 1% more. It's like 99 basis points more than a 10-year. That's not back to the high-level inversion we had back in March. At one point, we were 108 basis points inverted, but it had come all the way down to 50 and stayed there most of March, April, May, or you know the mid-March to mid-May. And now it has widened back out a bit in this inversion. And so I want to remind people that, that that's unhealthy. It is not good, but it is not creating something that isn't good. It's signifying something that isn't good. And that's one of the things I think is most misunderstood when people, sometimes they're very ignorant and sometimes they're not so much ignorant as they are um, kind of making stuff up, uh, talk about the yield curve, is that the yield curve being inverted is not creating bad news. It is signifying some form of instability or brokenness or dysfunction or something off off the norm in, in financial markets. And in this particular case, it is certainly a reference to the belief that on the longer end, rates will come lower, but in the shorter end, Fed breaks something. And then, you know, that tenure being all the way down at 3.6, 3.7, I've spoken uh, ad nauseum about what that signifies, low growth expectations in the future. So regardless, the inversion continues. What else do I want to highlight today? Consumer discretionary was top performer up over one and a half percent. Real estate was the worst performer down almost one and a half percent. Oil got hit pretty good. It was down four percent, still at sixty nine dollars and forty four cents per barrel. Now, the weekly jobless claims came in for the third week in a row at two hundred and sixty thousand. It's kind of a weird coincidence. It's within such a tight number, three consecutive weeks. But nevertheless, the four-week average is now up to the highest level it's been since November. So I don't know how anyone could really slice that as good news. Uh, there's no question those numbers have incrementally moved higher for jobless claims. However, it is worth pointing out that this number that we're at now is what we were last at in November. And of course, it didn't prove to uh, usher in a new wave of recessionary conditions after that. Uh, so I don't think that it's necessarily predictive of anything, but just fundamentally, uh, three weeks in a row is a little more worthwhile than one or two potential outlier weeks. Uh, existing home sales were 4.3 million. That was just a only tiny bit higher than what had been expected. And again, it's down over 20% year over year in terms of volume of housing sales. Nothing big to report there. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. Not a lot to report. We're um, in the midst of this kind of central bank season. The Bank of England surprised markets by announcing a 50 basis point increase. 25 have been expected. The uh, Fed has some governors saying, oh, we're going to stay high for longer. Other governors saying we're we're going to keep the pause on and not hike further. So they're they're throwing different trial balloons out there right now. And um, there is such a long period of time between now and the next meeting that I don't know which way you want to predict between my sort of gut feeling that they may end up being done and the futures market saying that there's 70, 75% chance that they're going to hike at the next meeting, yet with a lot of data points along the way that may give them cover to not hike. So I think it's kind of immaterial one way or the other. I'd certainly believe that the predominant market impacting narrative will not be what uh, if they hike or not further as much as how long they stay wherever they're going to be. And that continues to be a source of great controversy, debate and, and whatnot uh, in, in financial markets. 
So that's uh, the big story that a lot of folks are holding on to. Uh, of course, our vantage point is different that uh, company performance is going to ultimately drive things and you want companies that are as close to disconnected from this rel from the relevance of short-term monetary policy as possible. Uh, but be that as it may, um, we will have a wonderful Dividend Cafe for you tomorrow. I'm basically going to uh, give, I've written a Dividend Cafe that is kind of capturing a lot of the sentiments of the speech I gave out here at the symposium this week. And uh, there'll be quite a deck to go with it that may be of interest to you. A lot of charts, a lot of information. Uh, so we're doing our best to keep you informed, give you our perspective. I hope you've gotten something out of today's DC Today. Thank you for reading. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Reach out with questions anytime. Questions at thebonsongroup.com. Mm -hmm.